I'll just take a second here to go over the palette and colors and brushes and things like that that I use. The actual palette is an aluminum composite panel. It's the same material I paint on. It's pretty easy to clean. And I just clean it up with a palette knife and then give it a wipe down. And when it gets too dirty, I just throw them out and uh, cut up another one. And away we go again. As for the colors I use, I use a lot of different colors just for experimenting and different things. But the typical ones I use are uh, zinc white and Utrecht white is the one we've got here. It's really just a mixed white, so different, different brands will call them different things. Uh, zinc white is semi-transparent, quite weak, and relatively warm for white. And Utrecht white, or mixed white, is 40% um, zinc and 60% titanium, so slightly cooler, more opaque. So I like to use both of those. Cad yellow light, cad yellow deep, cad orange, cad red, medium usually, and uh, lizard and crimson, uh, manganese violet, cerulean blue hue. It's not true cerulean blue, but it's got a little bit of phthalo in it, so I like the intensity of that. Ultramarine blue, viridian green hue. Same thing, it's not true viridian, it's got a little bit of phthalo in it, so I like that. And then transparent red oxide and transparent yellow oxide. Usually I use gamblin for those, so they call them transparent earth red and transparent earth yellow. Those are sort of the typical colors I use. I've added a few, just a couple of the ones I experiment with is cadmium green. I use quinacridone rose and uh, magenta. And I experiment with a lot of other colors as well. Different things just to just to have some fun. So that's why my palette is really messy. I do squirt my paint out in the same place every time, but you can see there really there's not a huge order to it. It kind of goes from um, the warm colors, uh, yellow, orange, red, and then sort of to the cooler colors, blues, greens, and then my earth tones up the right-hand side. I would probably do it a little different if I were to start over today, but my palette has evolved over time, and uh, this is just sort of the way it's ended up. But I do find it really important, for me at least, to put my paint in the same place every time just so I know exactly where it is, so I don't have to think about where I've squirted it out, and around the edges. Keep as much mixing area clear so you can mix your paint the same. So that's what works for me anyway. Um, as far as brushes go, typically I like synthetic brushes. They're the ones in the middle there. I use almost all flats. The middle ones are Princeton brand, and uh, there's lots of good synthetic brushes out there, but those are the ones I use. Uh, the ones on the right are the bigger brushes I use. They're hog hair. I guess they're made by Da Vinci. And uh, they're big. They're flat. But uh, they're pretty thin. So they're, a lot of the bigger brushes you get are quite, they're fat. So they, it's almost like they carry too much paint. So these ones are pretty thin. I like that. The one brush there, I'm not sure. I think it's a house painting brush. I use it sometimes. Palette knives for mixing paint or, or making marks on the painting. Uh, and then on the left here, we have a Lang Nickel brush, which is really soft. So if you want to make some marks that don't leave any strokes in your mark, like a hog hair brush would, these are good for that. And then next to that is a really long haired brush. They're called, uh, I think they're called an Egbert. It's, um, I don't know, really long hair. So I like to use those for starting painting sometimes. And uh, here you can see Gamsol is mineral spirits that I use to clean my brushes, and Liquin is the, the medium I like to use. The Big Home Depot bucket is for cleaning my brushes. When I got those new big brushes, I needed a bigger pot, so I just made that up. Upside down ice cream bucket inside Home Depot bucket, and filled it up with Gamsol, and away you go. Put some holes in the ice cream bucket before you put it upside down in there. And uh, that's that. Just a quick look at my setup here. You can see my palette table is off to the side and my easel's in front there. But uh, that palette table is on wheels, so I can move it around 
uh, as well as the easel there. So sometimes when I'm painting still life, which I usually do on that table to the right and behind there, I can move everything around so I'm facing the still life if that's what you're after.